Hi everybody. So what I'd like to do is take you through the process of building a web application uh, almost from scratch. Uh, and this is a chance to kind of share some of the things that I've learned over the past year in doing this to build tools that I've been able to use with my students. So this is the math, the math caching website. It's a cool little thing that you can have your students do. Uh, they go there, they answer some questions, and based on those questions they enter a new URL which takes them to another list of questions and so it's kind of like a, a scavenger hunt through the internet. What I want to do is show you how you can make one of these using just uh, some tools that are freely available um, and I'll show you how you can put those together. Now I am going to show you, I am going to build this uh, piece by piece uh, on the screen so you can see where everything comes from. The only thing that I've pre-built here is this web page, which is going to be a little bit of a demo uh, of what the page might look like. Um, so this right now is just an HTML file that's sitting in the directory, in the project directory that I'm using here, just questions.html. The only other thing in that directory right now is this polygon image, which is what you see here. So the first thing that you want to do is get Bottle. Now Bottle is a web application framework. You can just go to bottlepy.org and go to, uh, this is the site that comes up when you load. You can take a look at some of the stuff that's here, get an idea of what it does, or if you want to just get straight to it, um, I'm going to go to the installation, I'm going to go to uh, PY Place, um, and we're going to download this file right here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get that. Go to my downloads, open this up, and what's really kind of neat about this is uh, that it is a single file and nothing more. So all I now need to do is grab this file right here, this bottle.py, and I'm going to throw it into my sites directory where I am doing this project. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to throw that bottle.py file right here. And so now there are three things in this directory, um, just this bottle file the HTML file, and the polygon. So I'm now going to open up Python. I'm using Python 3.2, but you don't have to. You can use one of the earlier versions as well. Uh, and I'm going to make a new file. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this right away as uh, mathcache.py. Save that. Um, so now that's another file that's in this directory. So we've added that. And what I'm going to do is import all those functions uh, from model. I'm also going to add one other thing that you'll find out about a little bit later. I'm going to call this localhost. Um, and that should do it. Um, and I'm also going to put in a command that runs the web server. So we're going to run, I'm going to make the host equal to that variable host. I'm going to put the port at 8080 and I'm going to put debug equal to true. So now if I run this, we see that it is running the web server on a local host 8080. Um, so if I want to see what this is creating for me, I go to this URL, localhost8080, I hit enter, and it tells us that it's not found, but this is actually bottle responding, and here's how I know. If I go back to my Python shell, I can see that it has received um, a request at this address. Um, 404 is an HTTP code that means it couldn't find the page, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. So let's make it so that uh, we have a page there. So I'm going to make a real quick route. Uh, this tells the web server um, 
to, to serve a page at a given URL. So I'm just going to call this def main. Um, don't worry too much about this if this doesn't make sense. I'm just showing, uh, showing you how this works. Um, and I'm going to return this is a test. Save that. I have to reload the restart the bottle server. Then go back to this and reload, and you can see, oops, there's still a problem. Oh, I see. Here we go. I have to put that. No. Oh, this is what I forgot. I forgot the at symbol. Okay, run this again. Do this, and now we see our. This is a test. Okay, uh, so that's that. And so we can change that. We can also have it return a template, which is going to be the key to making our application work. Uh, so. Let's take a look at our HTML file. I'm going to open it with a text editor that I like. Um, and so this is the HTML code for that page uh, that you saw back here. It's this page. Um, three questions, image, little form down here. And this is the HTML code that gives us this. Now, if I want my web server to serve this HTML file as uh, a page at the URL. There are a couple ways that I can do this. One way, and this is the way that we're going to be using in this little tutorial, uh, is to make this file a template itself. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take just the HTML file that's here, and I'm going to save it as, uh, instead of HTML, questions.tpl. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to go back to my Python file. And I'm going to return that template, questions.tpl, save that, and run it. And now, if I go to localhost8080, put in that leading slash, um, takes a second, and it loads that file. Almost. You can see that it's missing the image. So what I need to do to add that image is I need to set up one other thing in my file here. The problem is if you inspect the source of this web page, you see that it says the source is polygon.png. This is the file name that it's looking for. But because this file is coming from the web server, you have to tell the web server where to look for files like this. So to do that, I have to make a function that adds static files. So this is what I'm going to put in to do this. Um, this is some code that is directly out of the instructions um, that are on the main page for Bottle. I go back here and we look at the documentation, um, which is all here. Let's do a quick search for static, not found. OK, it must be in this tutorial here. So if we now search for static, do you find it there? Yes, it does. OK. So files that um, you just want the web server to serve as is instead of generating HTML from a template, they're called static files. And Bottle has a really nice way of managing that. Um, ah, here we go. So I've basically taken almost this exact code right here, and I pasted it into, pasted it into my program. The only difference is I've changed this to be uh, the directory where I will f where I find um, this web application. So it's going to look for these static files in this directory. Um, don't worry too much if you're not sure what that means. Um, I run this. We're still going to find that that when we load our program, it hasn't been able to find this. But that's because we have to say in the HTML file where that uh, image is located. So I'm going to add to the image source, I'm going to add static slash polygon.png. Save that. And now we reload. And we have our image there. So we now have our web server, which is, which is giving this particular set of questions when uh, 
uh, this URL is placed. Now, this probably doesn't impress you that much because this looks the same as what we had before, just with the, the local file, where this was coming directly off of, off of my computer. Um, so let me really quickly show you how, or, or maybe suggest how this might be a little more powerful. I'm going to add another route. I'm just going to call this test instead. Um, and so I'm going to just make another program. It doesn't actually matter what you name this function. Um, call it main2. I guess that's, I don't know. Well, th let's just go with it. And um, I'm just going to return this is test number two. Um, and so if we run this again, we can see that when we load this page, we get the page we'd expect. If I do forward slash test, I get this other web page. So now I can have all of these, pretty much any website that I want on top of this main domain, uh, just by adding it in that main file. And I want to show you a little bit about, about the power of templates, because right now we're, we're not doing anything very impressive. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the text for each of the questions here, and I'm going to put them in an array uh, or in a list in Python. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So inside this function where I'm serving that template, um, I'm going to write that question one has the text that's located here. Put that in quotes. I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the other two questions. Okay, so that's done. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my HTML file. And instead of writing question one, I'm going to use some symbols to tell um, Bottle that I don't want to put this text that was there before. I want to put whatever is inside the variable question one in this space. So these, these double braces are what indicate that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Make this question two. And we'll make this question three. So that's the first change. So what I'm seeing in this template is that if the web server is going to create a web page, it needs information about what to put here for question one, question two, and question three. Now we have to change things over here. The function returning a template here, returning this template, uh, it's going to return HTML generated by that file. But if I try to run this as is, uh, and I try to load that original address, it's going to complain and it's going to say question one is not defined. The reason it's complaining is that we haven't said in Python, or we haven't told this template what to use, what to put in that space for question one, question two, question three. So that's what I'm going to do here. Question one equals question one, question two equals question two, question three equals question three. Okay, now this right here um, is the statement where I'm saying in this template, we want to use question one um, from this program in the template. This text in that variable, this text in that variable. So now, if I reload, save and reload, and I reload this page, it now gives us exactly the same thing that we started with. Um, but th this time, that information is being delivered through these variables. Let me show you why this is really powerful. I'm going to make a second uh, page. I'm just going to copy this over and add in some other uh, questions. So what is... Uh, 2 times 2, what is 7 minus 3, and what is 1 minus 1. Okay, so we have those three questions. I'm going to change this. Um, I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to make this uh, route show up for page 1, and I'm going to make this one page 2. All right. 
Everything else can stay the same thing. I'm going to save that, reload it over here, and I'll reload this, but now I have to add that new address. So page one, there's our file here. But now, if I go to page two, it's going to use that same template, but it's going to use uh, the text that I have given it. Okay, now, um, I'm going to go over to, you notice that it is leaving this image in there, and we don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to go and I'm going to actually take out that part um, where I put in the image. So it appears exactly the same as the others. So we do that. Okay, and now we see our three questions with no image. If we go back to page one and reload it, now we see our three questions. So um, we're gonna compress this a little bit. It might be bothering you, excuse me, that we don't see that image yet. We'll get to that just uh, in, in just a few moments. Um, I'm gonna show you one more way that we can simplify this process even further. So we're taking these three questions and, and storing them here, sending them along with the template. Um, I can make one big list of these three questions, like so. Um, and now that I've done that, I send just that list of those questions to the template. Now what I need to do, and the reason I can do this, um, the reason this is going to work is I have to then go back to the URL and instead say that this is going to be the first element in that array, question zero. This is the second element in that array, question one. Uh, and this is going to be the third element in that array, question three, question two. Um, there's a reason why I'm doing this and you'll see why, again, trying to simplify this template even more as we go along. Uh, so now I save that file. I will save this. And it runs. And we can see, oh, we have a problem. I've not defined question. Oh, that's my problem here. This needs to be questions because that's what I named it in this file right here, in this uh, line right here. So let's try that one more time. Still complaining, huh? Oh, I need to, let me also do this. Let me put this in the second page, just because I will ultimately need that. Okay. Question zero, questions one, questions two. Okay, so let's check this then. Um, save it and run it. Um, Reload page one, that's giving us that. Let's reload page two. Okay, so again, there are different questions. Um, so we now have these two separate web, uh, web pages. I'll show you one more thing that we can do now that we have named this um, a single array. We're gonna use some of the capabilities of Python to uh, iterate over the questions that are given. Notice that this code is almost the same as this code, which is almost the same as this code here. Um, so what we can do is actually strip this out and do some inline coding using the templating language. So I'm gonna do for question in questions, okay? And what I do here to tell bottle that I am writing some Python as I put the percent sign there first. And what I want it to do is for each question, 
in questions. For each question that's in that array that I pass into the template, I want to have a row. Um, and I want to print the text of that question. Okay, And I have to end that for loop a little bit differently than in regular Python because this is a template. I put the uh, percent symbol and then end. Let's save that. And now if I run this, it looks exactly the same. Um, but it's creating this code for each question uh, that I pass it. The really powerful part to this is, let's say I want to get rid of one of these questions. So question three, I'm gonna strip out, and strip it out of there, and also here. Um, I save that and run it. It's going to give me the two questions for the second page. But if I go back to page one, it's gonna give me all three uh, so I don't have to write a separate piece of HTML to do this. Okay, now if you're like me, it's probably bothering you still that we don't have that image there. So I'm going to show you how we're going to handle that. Uh, in the template, I want it to make the question look like this. If there is no image, and I want, if there is an image associated with a given question, I want to put that image in the page, give it a little bit of space, and then put the question next to it. So inside this for loop, I'm going to add an if statement. Actually, even before I do this, so let's not get ahead of myself. Um, to do this, I'm going to make each question now a list. And in that list, it's going to have two things. It's going to have the text of the question, and it's also going to have a location for the image. So for most of these questions that I've made so far, we're not really telling it, uh, we're not giving it an image. There's only one question where that really needs to happen. Uh, and that's this middle question here. So let me add this to all of the others. So we'll put this in here. Okay, and let's get to the actual one that matters. So um, inside these quotes, I'm gonna put polygon.png because that's the image that I want it to serve up. Um, this is going to require that I make a couple changes to my program. Um, I'll show you what that is. I'm going to save that. Go to our HTML file. Now, what I need to do for each question, I want it to have, um, I want it to do one of two things. If, so again, because this is Python, I need the percent symbol. symbol. If question one, that's that second element, is equal to just a blank string. If that is the case, then I want it to do exactly what it did before. It, it makes this row um, and it adds the, the question text in there. If on the other hand, I want it to do something else, which is uh, the way this is going to work. Um, let me also take a moment here to talk about this. Uh, to make things pretty, I'm using a, uh, a library called Bootstrap, which you can, you can add to any HTML file just by adding this style sheet, this line pretty much, uh, to your page. Um, that's, that's where all these, this extra code, you don't need this in HTML to do HTML. Um, but it just makes it look really nice. Um, I'll show you what it looks like without it, just so you can see why I'm using it. Um, but I need to add another row. So this is going to be the same. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is create a space for the image and create a space for the text itself. This is what I typed, div class equals span four. Um, and then close that div tag just to, to be good. So um, inside this little part of the row, this is where I'm gonna put the image. Um, and the image I'm going to have to put, because remember we're storing this in a variable now, um, this is gonna be located in question one, that second element of the array, um, which reminds me of this up here needs to be question zero because I want the text 
in that array instead. So this is going to give us the, the location of that, uh, that image. Um, and I'm also going to add static to that because it's going to grab that image from that address. Um, the other thing that I need to do here is add uh, the other part. And this is where I'm going to put the same code from before. Question zero. Because that's going to, so this is going to put the image in on the left side and the text on the right side. And last thing I need to do is uh, close that row and also end my if statement. So I'm going to put that end there. So you can see we have a couple things here. We have our if statement, which is going to decide if we just have text, it's just going to display the text. If there is an image there, we're going to show the image and the answer text and the, the question text. Um, and then to end that if statement, we put in the percent symbol end. The second end you might remember is to close this for statement. So I'm going to save that and reload this page. And it's given us a very interesting bit of info here. Um, okay. Uh, let me just save this and reload it. Let's see if that works. And yeah, that works. Okay, cool. So now it is doing what we expected to do. If I go to page two, that's that other page with my simple arithmetic, it gives me the questions. So now this is working exactly as I want it to. Uh, just as a demonstration to show that this, this templating is working, I'm gonna switch question uh, two and question three in order here. I'm gonna do that on this page um, and reload that and just show you how easily um, that changes when we load that first page. Um, again, it makes no change except I forgot to switch those question numbers. Um, there is another way to handle that, um, again, using templating, but I'll leave that perhaps as something for you to investigate on your own. Okay, let me show you real quick why I'm including Bootstrap in here. Let me just delete this line um, and reload. Um, I think I need to restart the server for this little demo to work. Um, oh, I know why, because I'm doing that on the wrong page. So we'll delete this one, save it, and reload. And you can see it's not as nice. It's just times your Roman text. I mean, it would work. Um, it's, it's not the end of the world. I just really like how Bootstrap makes it just look that much more professional, as if I know what I'm doing here. Um, okay, let's now talk about this location box, because we haven't done anything with it yet. If I, so, um, let's go to, let's check out this one again. Um, so if I take our questions, um, I should realize now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that third question in there, back in there. Um, just because this this is not consistent. Um, okay, so there's that. Question three, save that. What does it like? Oh, I have a comma in there. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're back to having our three questions now. Um, this is where we want our students to be entering the answers. So this says multiply the answers of three questions together and round to the nearest integer. Um, so four times four, 16 times zero. So we could say zero. Now right now, notice this URL that's coming up when I, when I hit enter. Um, gives us this, this interesting URL that has location equal to zero and it has a question mark there. When you have the question mark there, it means it's sending a query as part of the request to get a web page. And normally this means it's, it's sending that information to the server in order to help it uh, make a decision about what it shows you. Um, so what we need to do in our program is accommodate the fact that um, it may be getting a location. 
After all, this is the whole point. We want our students to be searching for things. So the way we do this in bottle is we write, uh, I'm going to make a variable location, and I'm going to set that equal to request.query.location. Um, so this is the request variable that you are sending to the server. This part right here is the name of that variable, which if you look in the HTML file over here, I'm saying that the name of the information that you are submitting when you hit that button is location. Um, just, just to make this clear, let me, make, let me rename this new location. Uh, and then here, this will be new location. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to get rid of these decorated URLs again, but this one in particular, um, and run this. Okay, and now you'll see when I when I load the page, um, it's showing the page that we had before. Um, but up here in the URL, it's including that extra part with the location. So I'm, I can put anything in here and it will store that information in this variable new location. I can even put a decimal uh, and it will go to that location. Whatever you are doing, whatever goes into this field, uh, it is storing in that variable new location. Um, and so this is really powerful because we can now make decisions based on what that location actually is. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say if that location variable is equal, remember the double equals, so what you use to check to see if two things are equal. If that location is equal to, let's say, a blank, um, then I want, oops, then I want it to return this. I want it to do all three of these things. So if the location is blank, I want it to give me I want to give whoever is loading that web page uh, these three questions. Let's try loading that real quick. Okay, it doesn't look like that. Um, let's see, local variable questions reference before assignment. Oh, uh, that's what it doesn't like. So question is equal to this. Okay, so the problem is that it's so the problem is that it's returning this template the way I had it over here. Um, the location was not equal to the quotes. So it was uh, returning this not knowing what questions is equal to. I think if I include this as part of that if statement, it should be OK. And let's also include an else. So let's say our starting location is just blank. We want that first page to be where um, our students start. Um, but we want to say that suppose they are going to a location, they put in a wrong answer. We want to return um, a template that tells our students that they are lost. Um, so I have a little bit of foresight so I know what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to return another template that I'm about to make. So if the location is, is blank, I want it to give those three questions. If the question is, if the location is not known that you put in, I want um, a page to come up that says you are lost. You don't know what you're doing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that template. I'm going to just uh, take this template file that I've been using for a while. Um, I'm going to resave it as lost.template. And I'm going to get rid of most of this. Um, I want to get rid of pretty much all of that. And I want to say, just in big letters, um, that there are no math questions hidden at that location. Actually, um, I said at the location, and I want to store, I want it to print out the location that was put in. So there are no math questions in that location, location. Go back and check your answers. Okay. And that should do it. Okay. Everything is looking in order there, I think. Um, 
to reload our server. So we've done that in a little while if we need to. Okay, and so now you can see, let's go back to the main page. Okay, so you can see this is what comes up when the location is blank. Um, so this is what your students will get when they go to the first page. But now I go to location 131 and it tells me, uh, I go to that location, I hit enter and it tells me, up oh, there are no math questions hidden location 131. You have to go back and check your answers. Um, so also notice this, this could be if you're doing something maybe using words and you want to do, uh, one of these questions could be write the first letter of all of your answers. So G H J, go to location and it tells you there are no questions hidden at location G H J. Um, so really, this this is one limitation I think of the original Math Catch page, um, the the page that I showed you at the very beginning of this video, because those all have to be integers. Um, otherwise, you'll run into trouble trying to get that address. Um, so now we want to we want to process this. Um, I want this location. Uh, this is our first question. I'm going to add in another case. Else, if location is equal to, and we want this to be the answer to these questions. You know, let me actually let me change this. What is the sum of the first five whole numbers? Um, let's put it in positive so we don't get into the whole argument about zero. So the first five positive whole numbers. So we know that that answer is going to be 15. Um, and you could include this perhaps as part of, as part of your work. Uh, there are six sides in that polygon and uh, there are eight prime numbers um, between one and 20. Um, so our answer is going to be uh, 720. So we now want, if the location is equal to 720, we want to give other questions, our other set of questions. Um, include that colon, paste that in there, and we need to add tabs to all three of those. Oh, that was too far. Uh, so now it's going to deliver this other set of questions. Let's throw that in as well. Um, and so what I'm going to do in each of these cases, so once we have decided what those questions are, we want to return the template with those questions. Let's save that. Okay, and reload. So we can see there are questions. I put in 99. Okay, so there are no questions there. Now let's put in 720. I go to that location and now it gives me my next set of questions. And so you can imagine that you could do this for a whole bunch of different locations. You could, you could set up um, as many of these pages as you want with different questions. It's all HTML, so if you want to style them somehow, um, you, can, you can do that. Maybe, maybe you want to make um, the question part um, uh, italic. Just tossing this out there is something you might want to do for, for one of your questions. Uh, that didn't work. Um, oh, this brings me to a good point here. If in a template you want it to ignore or you want to it to use um, uh, formatting that you include in your text, all you have to do is include an exclamation point there next to the text. So if you do that, it means it's, um, it's going to include, it's going to insert HTML tags that you put in there um, and use them to format. Right now it's doing what's called escaping. It is uh, taking these HTML tags and it's saying, well, I'm gonna assume that everything inside this is text that needs to be printed. Um, so if we reload this, now it's interpreting that as just put this as italics. Um, but I'm going to take that out of this here. Okay, and so uh, let's add in one last thing and say, say you want 
um, to have like a congratulations page. So let's say the answer that they need to get to that congratulations page is uh, zero. Okay, so the final page, the answer that they get to all those questions is zero. Um, let's make one more template. I'm gonna take our lost template and I'm gonna save it as um, uh, success uh, TPL. And I'm gonna say congratulations. You have reached the end of the quest. Okay, so save that. So if you get to that final location, um, I wanna return the template success.tpl. I don't have any variables in there, so I can just leave that um, as is. Run it. So reload this. Um, and let's say whichever page I add, the answer is zero. Put this in. Oh, it doesn't like that, does it? Um, did I reload this? Oh, that's what the problem was. I did not. So now we've got a location zero, and it says, congratulations, you have reached the end of the quest. So you can make this the, the final thing that you have uh, in, your, in the activity for your students. The last thing that you need to do, that you need to know, in order to make this accessible to your students is how to share this URL. You notice right now this is at localhost. This is only accessible to uh, my computer. To make this accessible to everybody, um, I'm on a Mac, so I'm, I need to find out what my IP address is. And I can see that it is this. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to my original code here and in this variable where I put host, I'm going to put my IP address. I save it, reload it, um, and now you can see that it's listening on this address. And if I put that in my um, browser, my first page will pop up. Um, and this should be accessible to anyone on the same Wi-Fi network. Wherever the router is located, um, as long as everyone is on the same router, you should be able to access this. And uh, it may be possible that depending on how your routers are configured in your school, that you can access this in multiple locations as well. Uh, but that really depends on how everything has been set up. Uh, with that, I, I hope this has been useful. I will put the, um, the original HTML file up, um, probably on GitHub. Um, but feel free to contact me um, uh, using uh, either my, my uh, YouTube account or through Twitter, uh, which I've put in the information just below the video. Also, just show you, I'll put it here. So it's at EMWDX. That's going to be my, uh, my address. Okay, all right. Thank you for watching. Hope this was useful.